Let's take a look at making a model in QGIS using the field calculator and the attribute table. So I'm going to look at making a model with vector data. So I'll be looking at the attribute table and um, making some calculations in the attribute table in order to make statements about the data that aren't necessarily in the data to begin with. So what I'm looking at right now, this is Queens in New York, and these are the census tracts of Queens. And on top of those census tracts are points. These are Airbnb listings from inside Airbnb. And what I want to do is try to model what the um, impact of Airbnbs on people who live in Queens uh, is. So um, specifically, I am curious to see where people's rents are most likely to be affected by Airbnbs in their neighborhoods. So um, a couple of variables I might look at if I was making a model on this kind of question are um, how many renters or what proportion of households are rented, rented, and um, what's the income like, because if the your income is higher, you're less likely to be affected by those increased rents. And finally, how many Airbnbs are in your neighborhood. So we're going to try to make a model out of adding these three variables together, and adding those three variables will give us an estimate of um, at least areas that might be more impacted than others, relatively. Okay, so let's start looking at the attribute table for the Queen's census tracts. And you'll see that um, we have a couple of data points in here already. I've joined this data with um, information from the Census Bureau, from the uh, American Community Survey. The first three columns here, households, owners, and renters, is about um, the number of households that there are, the number of households that are owner-occupied, and the number of households that are renter-occupied. And then the next column I have is the median income for that census tract. So the first thing I want to do is normalize the renters field. So right now the renters field is just the count. So it's um, 436 or 169. It doesn't really tell you proportionally how many renters there are. And it's hard to compare the census tracts because we don't know how many households there are in each census tract. You can see that it varies quite a bit. Uh, just looking at this screen right here, some have 368, some have 2400. It's a pretty broad range. So I'm going to normalize the renters. I'm just going to do that by dividing renters by households. And I'm going to do that in the field calculator. I'm going to create a new field. I'm going to make it a decimal number because it's going to have digits after the decimal point. And I'll bump the precision up a bit. 10 and 8 should work fine. I'm going to call this S renters, uh, short for scale renters. And um, if you haven't used the field calculator in QGIS before, what you're doing is you're writing an expression over here. And you could just write an expression if you knew what it was off the top of your head. If you don't, you can go to the middle and look under fields and values, and you'll see the same fields as exist in the attribute table. And I just want um, renters divided by only once, slash is divide in these expressions, households. Okay, so renters over households. So in tracts that have entirely renter-occupied households, zero owner-occupied households, 
the value will be closer to 1. In situations where the opposite is the case, fewer renters, if you have zero renters, this will be zero, because it's zero over whatever uh, the number of households is. So I'm going to hit OK, and you should see a new field in the attribute table. Uh, it's null for sum, where um, both are zero. Um, <clears throat> but otherwise, we see values like 0 0.8, 0 0.07, and I want to look at this and compare it to the columns that already exist and see that, yes, proportionally, proportionately this makes sense. Okay, so I want to do the same thing for median income, but we have, um, we have one small problem with median income, and that is uh, the median income is in QGIS as text. You can tell it's text because it's left aligned. So I need to do two things. I need to turn this into an integer, and then I want to scale it. So let's do that in two steps. To turn it into an integer, I'm going to do the same thing in the field calculator. I'm going to call this med income two. Say, and I want median income. I want to convert this to an integer. And under conversions, you can find to int. You see that it takes uh, some text that represents a number and gives you the actual number. Um, so the way this looks is the name of the function, left parentheses, and you need a right parentheses in there too. So that's almost the case. Um, that's almost fine. Um, but if you look down at the bottom, it says expression is invalid, cannot convert um, in quotes a hyphen to int. So these hyphens in the attribute table are making it so that Q just can't convert this column to an integer. So we need to do one more thing. We need to use a condition, an if condition in this case. So the way this works is it says if, if some condition is true, then return uh, one value. If it's false, return the other. So they have some examples here. If 1 plus 1 equals 2, return yes. Otherwise, return no. Um, so what we'll do here is add the if. And what we want to say is if mead income is equal to, and in single quotes, a hyphen. If that's the case, we want to return null. Otherwise, we return the integer. Okay. So remember that if is a function here in QGIS. So you need left and right parentheses. And if it helps you to look at it this way, um, I think it might be a little bit easier to read if you write it like this. So if mead income is hyphen, make it null, otherwise make it an integer. And I'll hit OK. And you should see mead income 2 is a new attribute. It's all integers. Mead income is text. But you can see that the integers are the text value. Uh, except when it's a hyphen, then it becomes null. Okay, so we have an integer. We want to scale that. And similar to renters, I want to scale this between the values 0 and 1. Um, but in this case, I want 1, I want closer to 1 to be um, more risk of 
being harmed by Airbnb listings in your neighborhood. So I want one to be um, the lowest median incomes, and I want zero to be the highest median incomes. If you're the highest median income, you have the least risk of Airbnbs, um, making it harder for you to rent a place in a location. Um, so I'm going to do the field calculator once again. You see we're doing lots of field calculator work here. Um, I'm going to make this a decimal number again because it's a scale value. And I want to call this S income. I'm using these S underscores to keep track of which ones are scaled. Okay, so what we want to do is, um, like I said, we're scaling the values. Um, under math, you'll see this um, function called scale linear. What this does is it takes a domain, which are your income values, and a range, and it will um, map the domain to the range. So lowest, um, lowest in the domain becomes lowest in the range, highest in the domain becomes highest in the range. Um, I just remembered though that I need to know the lowest income and highest income, so I'm going to cancel out of that and sort mean income. This is just the easiest way to do this. 15474, and I'm just going to make a note of that on a piece of paper. And if I sort it the other way, I should see the highest values. 151964. Okay. Back to the field calculator. S income decimal 8. Go back down to math, scale linear. And I'm scaling a field, uh, I'm scaling based on mead income too. So you can go to the fields and values, mead income too. All right, so the domain is the minimum, which I wrote down, 15474. The maximum, 151964. And then I want the lower values to be closer to one, the higher values to be closer to zero. And again, this one to zero, or zero to one, zero is the least risk of being um, priced out of your neighborhood due to Airbnbs. One is the highest risk. And I'll hit OK. And we'll see, hopefully, so we see, let's sort these. The lowest value is one. If I scroll the whole way down, you should see these eventually go down little by little until they get to zero. Okay. All right. So now we have the renters and the income. Uh, last thing we want is the count of Airbnbs, and then we'll scale that. So I'm going to do that by counting points in polygons. counting the number of Airbnb listings in each census tract. And actually, I want to turn off editing mode first and save it. Let's save the census tracts. And then let's do that. So let's look at our attribute table. We should have S renters, S income, and num points. Um, to, we'll do the same thing. Num points, we're going to scale from 0 to 1. The minimum is 0, the maximum is 94. Same exact thing. And 
while I remember. It's 0 to 94. I want this to go from 0 to 1. So if you have more Airbnb listings in the census tract, you have more risk of being displaced by them. And I want to call this S Airbnb so I can remember that. And let's hit OK. All right. So now we can see the values go from 0 up to 1, as expected. All right. So I'm going to click that pencil and save it and go to the layer styling area. I'm going to do a graduated style on the census tracts using our scale values. Um, I'm actually going to hide that too. And to do this, we can use an expression. Um, so we're adding up the risk. scale, renters, income, and Airbnb. And let's classify it. So you can see um, the areas, if we turn the Airbnb listings back on, you can see um, the areas with no or uh, few Airbnb listings, the risk is lower because the, there are fewer of them there in the first place. Right. You can see these areas have a lot more Airbnbs, so they're a lot more at risk. And um, as far as outliers go, you might want to use the Identify Features tool to come in here and pick one of the higher values. Um, it's hard to see because the red outline is exactly the red. Um, but you can look in here. And you can see it has a high proportion of renters. The income is kind of in the middle. And the Airbnbs are kind of in the middle. Uh, because there are a lot of renters, the risk is higher. Let's look at one with uh, lower values. You can see with the lower values, way fewer renters, so way less risk. Uh, the income is also on the higher side, so less risk. And finally, the Airbnbs are very low. So um, it adds up to being relatively little risk at, um, of being displaced by Airbnbs. Okay. So your next steps here would be um, you, can, you can play around with this formula a bit. If you go back to the layer styling, you can uh, weight your model. And when you weight a model, you're just going to uh, decide which factors count for more or less. So we might say, actually, the Airbnbs are really important. Let's say they're five times as important. Because if you don't have Airbnbs in an area, it really doesn't matter. So we can try that. We can see how that changes the values. Um, we made it, this is a pretty dramatic change. You you might not always multiply something by five, um, but you can see that the values have changed pretty dramatically. Um, but if you look at the Airbnb listings, uh, for the most part, it makes sense, right? The areas with uh, way fewer Airbnbs just don't show up as much, whereas the ones with a lot of Airbnbs show up a lot more. And um, to be clear, I put these parentheses in here to group the math to make it very explicit that I'm only multiplying the Airbnb scale by 5, not anything else. One last thing, you'll see that some census tracts aren't showing up at all. Um, this might come up in some situations, so if we went back to a single symbol. I can select one of those tracks that were disappearing. 
and you can see that um, S renters and S income are null. So when we're adding up the values, we're getting a null value. Similarly with um, this census tract. So what you might want to do is um, you could convert all of these nulls to zeros in your scales, um, or you could just make another layer such as this one. Um, so we could go back to the layer styling, go back to graduated, go back to our expressions and find the most recent one we used under the recent area back to normal. And so you can have another layer and just make it the no data layer. It's fine. <clears throat> I think when it comes to census tracts, using a no data layer might make more sense because it's really showing you places where there are parks or airports, places where generally people aren't actually living. Um, and I think that can be pretty illustrative too. All right, so I hope that helps you as you're thinking about modeling things for your own projects and helps you understand the functions you need in QGIS's field calculator to make those models happen.